And there it is. I've spotted another Kona EV, the full change model. Welcome to Cars in Korea. I introduce newly released Genesis Hyundai and Kia Cars. And the car I have behind me today is Kona EV right there. And for those of you guys returning, you guys know that it's not my first time covering this car, but I actually came down here today because I can actually get to show you the interior super, super up close. And you could probably see from behind me right there, right there and here, I got some lighting this time. I got ready and I will focus on the interior of this car. So I know that's a long introduction. Let's get to it. Hopefully the light is working this time. I think it's like two in the morning, but once again, I made it into a broad daylight. For those of you guys joining my channel and also checking out the clip for the first time, make sure you go check out another video right above here because I've actually spotted a little less than two weeks ago and I've actually covered intensively about the exterior. And I've also covered the end line, of course, the full change model. So make sure you go check it out. A little bit of a discussion disclaimer want to throw this out before i get into the car this color combination you see right here this will never make it to the production this car is from the hyundai motor group lab since kona ev has officially debuted uh, with the image kona ev got the camouflages off and they're doing the real world test so this is actually before the paintwork has been done and they're just collecting the real world uh, real world data that's all that is the reason why we see this off match color with the gray and also the white body and all and i have the exact same color combination but from the plate i can tell it's a different model and of course once again i came out here because this time that has no tint so i actually want to touch up on the interior first and then we'll come back and check out the exterior the rest and as you can probably see from all the ice on the car and also other cars here in the parking lot it's still below zero zero degrees celsius and it's freezing literally and i got the lighting work this time look at that ladies and gentlemen i get to show you this finally this is the steering wheel of all full change kona 2023 ev model right there in the middle is the same one that we have spotted from Hyundai Granger, also known as Azera for North American market. I have a full review on the video above in the card, so go check it out. That four dots, it's actually Morse code for letter H, definitely standing for Hyundai. It has the good old three spoke wheel. We can see it has the uh, good old HDA control on the left and on the right is the volume, phone and also music and etc. A uh, selector for the region break level press that to lower it as we can see and one on the left is to increase it with the plus right there that is the gear selector that is the shifter the column type that has been moved up from the conventional spot right there so there is no giant gear shift knob sticking out or popping out from here but it's been implemented right above there not only does that make the car look more sleek and upscale but well of course it provides more space in the middle and center console just like the ones we've been seeing in latest Hyundai cars you can also remove that cup holder roll it inside and you'll have the entire center console to yourself you could fit about a mid-size a purse in there as well so those are the buttons for those we can see it's got the push engraved right here so when you press that those cup holders will pop out SD card slot or if not the button for the built-in cam and speaking of the built-in cam I really have a lot to show you about that but that is the rear view mirror that we get on Kona EV but do you notice something different it's completely almost well it's nearly bezel-less there is no bezel I don't want to be jumping around too much but I really have to show you this first that is you see that camera right here and so that is the camera for the rear view and well yeah it's on the surveillance mode it's recording me right now but see what's behind you using this camera right here and it will be hooked up to the rear view mirror that we just spotted and how do i know because i had the exact same thing on the latest hyundai palisade the flagship suv from hyundai family let me line it up with the antenna right there so you see the camera is right in the middle so it's centered to show you 
what's behind you. Well, you might be thinking, hey, we have the rear view mirror for that right there, right? But no, trust me, this works really great under poor condition weather, such as heavy rain. And it really works beautifully during the nighttime. Inserting the footage from Palisade right there, you see what the difference is now. I'll come back to the exterior one more time. So like I said, I want to touch up on the interior. That is the wireless charging pad, all the self-explanatory buttons. And I wasn't able to show you this last time. Once again, it was heavily tinted, that car, but this one isn't. Heated seats, uh, heated steering wheel. Huh, I don't see ventilated seats, huh? But that is probably because this has the basic seats in here so when you see the headrest right there you see it's the fabric your back is supported that's actually fabric but ones that are wrapping around those part is actually leather be of course some synthetic leather too pursuing that environmental eco-friendly materials using the upcycled and recycled materials that we have been seeing throughout a lot of ionic brands ionic 5 and ionic 6. that's quite a bit of an aggressive bolster too so i think it will provide a very comfortable cushion seats just look at that look at that touch has the Kona engraved on the headrest and I also like how they carve that out kind of uh, giving that ergonomic feel to it and of course no body part is going to be touching that area but you know what I mean futuristic kind of a design to it I want to say there's another one I want to show you you could probably see I'm a little too excited because I get to cover the interior finally and there are just so many points that I've missed out and I'm finding it out for the first time as well so that's what all the excitement is about <laughs> all right enough of that let's get back to it again so right here oh no it's all frozen and some of you guys asked me about the HD and I was personally really curious about that too I know that it's not a combiner type now a little hard to capture but trust me I can see it with human eyes this is not a combiner type anymore and that is the HD that we know of which will shoot right into the windshield and show all the necessary data accordingly so right there we can see there's no cover like the previous model where the combiner types this this is the 12.3 dual monitors left and right not connected broken in the middle right there it's slightly carved towards the driver and right here on the left that actually is a dead space and it's really really tricky to make the best use out of it we've seen ionic 5 they have used that as like a metal plate where we could attach some of the magnet and you could place your family photo dogo photo i'll definitely put car photos up there <laughs> drop in the comment below what kind of photos would you attach right there with a magnet elantra had like different sports mode button right there too and with elantra n they just literally left that area blank but i have a feeling that this looks like that of the ones that we have seen on ionic 5 uh, material wise and also the space wise it kind of looks that way i don't want to miss anything this time so well, I just want to show you the interior super close because that's what I have. So it seems like that is the uh, speaker area, perhaps. Got to double check on that, but that's a little bit of a tweeter right there we have as well. It's been a while that we were missing any extra storage area right there, mostly due to the safety regulation and that it's got to do with the airbag at the time of the accidents. So that was gone, but once again, we got it back and that might be a little thing, but it actually helps a lot. A drop down type and let me go around and show you about the upper buttons as well as the column type shifter from the other side. It's all frozen. So, um, well, nothing special. I've covered this part of my previous video as well. Buttons for the navigation systems and all that. The AC control and a lot, a lot of physical buttons as we can see. Focus, you can do it. There you go. So that is the column type and push it in for the parking and twist it around to the direction that you want to go. Forward, drive, pull it in towards you. That's a reverse. I don't know if I can do better on the second row seat. I'll give you the grandeur one. It's exactly the same thing. All right, this side is not going to work. And I definitely missed out a lot on the second row seat last time. So I want to touch up on that. I don't look like it's going to recline all that much. Got to double check on that, but I'll definitely be able to do that in a few months if not next month or 
four this month. Now it's a year 2023. The most important thing right there, the second row seat gets the AC finally, which it didn't on the first generation, the previous model. So the good news, a very good news, of course. And underneath is the V2L. Kona EV will most likely be same, if not very similar to current Gia Nero EV, the latest model. And also the battery is now the CATLs. So I'll show you the battery underneath as well. So that is the side skirt. That is the lowest part of the car uh, in terms of the body. And that is how much the battery sits lower to the ground, sticking out that much. But as for the clearance, um, it's quite high enough it's not super high ultra high but definitely you gotta watch out and be cautious for the battery packs underneath for those of you guys checking out the video for the first time on kona ev probably this is what you've been waiting for the exterior i actually went through in detail let me go over some of the exterior points that i didn't necessarily miss out but i just want to recap and also kind of answer the questions from the subscribers the front i gotta get started with this one first they actually have three major different body kits and exterior that's what i mean when it comes to the look of the kona itself but uniquely to kona ev is this seamless horizon lamp and once again stupid me i did not cover this in detail last time up close like i am doing right now so from here to all the way to here is actually the pixelated seamless horizon lamp that kona ev gets well i personally thought that was limited to ionic brand only but obviously it's now reserved for hyundai evs so speaking of that pixelated seamless horizon lamp right underneath is also other pixels and wow i don't think i've seen this one on my previous one maybe it's because of the moisture no 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 trust me it's a different one so now the pixels here it's colored so that's what I mean, everybody. So this is not a final production model. So this version is actually also an upgrade from the last one and it's got painted pixels. So pixels are standing out much more than it did on the last, the other model that I have covered. On the front, we have four sensors. On the sides, we have one. So there are six sensors on the front bumper alone, but not just that. There's also the camera right here and sensors for the HDA as well. Open area for the radiator. And also, I've actually mentioned that this would be the active air flap in my previous video, but I now have a feeling that that might not be. I may have delivered a false information. That is probably where the sensors are sitting and hidden. And we always have been seeing this black bar throughout Hyundai EVs. And that's also including Ionic 5 and also Ionic 6, which kind of stood out a lot. But that is probably what it is. And probably the most controversial thing about this Kona EV, that is the front charging port on the front. So unlike the eGMP, the electric global modular platform that Hyundai Motor Group used on all Ionic 5, Ionic 6, so GV60, so on and so on, Kona EV doesn't use a explicit chassis or body for the EV only, just like Nero. So that is the reason for the front port charging. Goes the same for Nero EV as well. I know not many people like the front charging ports. That's also including me, but it's just got to do with the nature of the car being. Of course, Hyundai could send it backwards and also put it on the sides. That will definitely increase costs involved into producing this Kona EV. So that is some kind of a compromise that Hyundai they definitely had to make the headlamps are lowered and it's sitting out further down now it's not all that unique seeing this lowered and separated drl and the headlights just so you know the upper drl is just the drl only for kona ev there is no turn signal nothing like that it is just the drl right above and everything else is located right here with the headlights the turn signal reflectors and all that the separation of the DRL and the headlights, it's not all that 
unique. Kona is what started it all. Kona has stepped it up and they even pushed the headlights further out to the fender right here. So the headlight is actually sticking all the way out to the fender. Look at that, just like that. A lot of people actually mentioned and commented, worried about the fixing cost should there be an accident. And a lot of people scrape and there are a lot of common bumper damages. I get that. Probably will much be higher than just fixing the bumper alone. I would choose design over fixing cost and you see, I have insurance for that and I rather have something useful, fancy that looks good on my car than having to worry about the repair costs. We have EV6 right there, one of the best EV cars in Gia family too, right? And just look at, they got the sensors there, they have the active air flap for Ionic 6 and such and such. So there are a lot of things on the front bumper happening. So I actually like this design. Kudos to Hyundai, definitely. I don't really want to repeat all that much because I've gone through this already a lot on my previous video. Seeing that pixel points, this car is an upgrade from the last one. So I want to actually get a closer look one more time. Now that we have covered the front pixel part, I can come back to the wheel and that is just look at that, check it out. It has pixels in wheels as well, but pixels all together, it formulates a circular wheel how brilliant is that it just barely looks like a curvature on the outer part just it just looks like a pixel to me what how does that look to you kona ev gets a 19 inch wheels and tires because kona and line that i've spotted it didn't get 19 but 18. kona ev actually gets a larger wheel by an inch 235 45 19 all around the, has the ventilated discs as well and good one pot piston this is the profile of 2023 kona ev what does this car remind you of i mean there is a car that runs through my mind i actually didn't point it out all that much on my previous one but it is more like a baby brother of hyundai tucson and of course the latest one the straight lines here but mostly that cladding, it definitely has that Kona, excuse me, Tucson scent to it. What do you think? And I really love the mix of the designs that Hyundai used on Kona EV. The straight lines that we started seeing on Hyundai Elantra, the CN7 latest model. Aggressive, Hyundai calls it the armor fender, armor type fender right there a lot of designs merge right here starting with the cladding and also the side skirt but don't let that black part fool you that is not the side skirt but it actually the side skirt is underneath that right here just like so that profile definitely stands out much more from this angle when there is lights keep in mind it's two in the morning if not three right now this will strike off the light much more better under sunlight i wish i have the chance to check this car out under the sunlight for sure so above one of the top is the brake light reflector reverse lights and turn signal sensors on the rear bumper as well uh, this kona ev definitely is different from the one that i've spotted last time so there is that reflector on the rear also pops out that pixel light design even more so in the middle this is just the plastic piece so don't get confused however unlike the last one i've spotted this is finished in grayish color too so it has that pixel design to it and it's got more definition to it reflector so that is the reflector type all the way to here that is what it would look like from behind and same thing as the front here is just the good old tail lamp that we would know but in the middle is the pixelated lights and this having the red portion it stands out much more better than the front one this is the latest emblem that we all see on other hyundai cars i can't believe i have i'm pointing this out but this is the rear wiper so there is the rear wiper on kona ev and that is the radius the spoiler there is nothing open cut open anywhere third brake light it's all the way inside like that if the whole thing lights up I mean that is going to look sick that is something that i've never seen in on a production car just yet thus far for hyundai grandeur the trunk button was this one right here so you could push it in and the trunk would open but nope it's actually right here the good old button type where the trunk is the reverse cam and 
the license plate lights for the tow and where the fog lamp in the middle would sit and i think there was one on the one that i have spotted so you see there are some of the export models they will get the fog light in the middle and some other countries they won't so depending on which country you're in that might differ so keep that in mind so for this model obviously it's left empty from behind and it's got the multi-link suspension system and that is i don't have all the detail info on that one yet but just like as it has been multi-link on the rear and that is the battery pack how much we can see from behind it's not like completely covered with undercovers and all however due to the nature being with the battery pack sitting all that like so there is not much of a need for that and i think it would just do as good without the undercover so that's it for today uh, i don't know how long i've been shooting but i actually went over the exterior and interior the whole lot again i love my job i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did don't forget to subscribe and like cars in korea and i'll come back with more cars like this and introduce you with the newly released Genesis Hyundai and Kia cars. I'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah, I gotta get warmed up now. Hey, you see, I have EV6 right next to it and I can't believe I wasn't showing you the comparison of having them together like so. You get an idea. EV6 is almost touching the stopper. Kona EV is not. That is what it kind of looks like from the profile and let's go check out the front as well so do keep in mind ev6 is actually parked a little more closer to the back the profile ah it's not going to show all that much i just want to show you what it looks like with the car sitting next to each other all right so that really is it and i'll see you next video thanks for watching Bye bye